In this video, I'm going to explain the practical differences between eccentrically gouged and concentrically gouged cane. So, are you ready for this? It's Morphin time! Brontosaurus! <laughs> And don't forget that if you like this video and other videos on this channel, to hit the subscribe button and make sure that all the notifications are on so that you can find your way back for the next one. Now, this isn't the first time I've spoken about gouging on the channel, but let's go in depth on this today. Let's first define the terms concentric and eccentric as they apply to gouging. Concentrically gouged cane is gouged in a way so that the side edges along the total length of the piece are equal in thickness to the center line. Eccentrically gouged cane is gouged in a way so that the side edges along the length of the piece are thinner than the center line. Of course, there are many degrees of eccentricity. If a piece of cane is 1.4 millimeters thick down the center line, then the side edges only need to be 1.39 millimeters to qualify as eccentric. But in this video, let's assume that we're talking about cane which is visibly eccentric to the naked eye. As a side note, it's worth mentioning that the gouging style where the side edges along the total length of the piece are that are thicker than that at the center line, that's called elliptical. In practical terms, this cane is unusable for our purposes. That's not to say that elliptical cane has not been used successfully in professional concerts. Of course it has, but it's not worth spending any time on that subject in this video. So although many bassoonists and reed makers want to work with concentric cane, they're actually working with very slightly eccentric cane. This has to do with the fact that cane is an organic material and that most gouging machines have no way of forcing each piece of cane to align exactly along the bed of the gouger. Furthermore, in order to gouge concentrically, you need a blade which is of a specific diameter to cut and it'll only make a perfectly concentric cut at a very specific thickness. To calculate the blade diameter, we take the gouging bed diameter and subtract from that twice the thickness of the desired gouge. So for example, if we would like the gouger to be set up for cane with a diameter of 25 millimeters to make concentric cane at 1.4 millimeters thick, then the blade should be 22.2 millimeters in diameter. So unless you're working with a gouging machine like the Side Edge Clamping Gouger by Greg James of Precision Music Products in Toronto, Canada, you're not going to easily produce cane which has been gouged concentrically to, let's say, a theoretical standard. I have to say that a number of people who are going to watch this have just flared their nostrils at me or rolled their eyes, but if we're talking strictly about definitions, then that's what it is. In reality, when we talk about the difference between concentric and eccentric in our own reed-making processes, we're really talking about where our preferences line up along a spectrum of extremely eccentrically gouged cane on one side and truly concentric cane on the other. Some reed-making machine companies tend to generalize in their advertisements and say that concentric cane is for North Americans and eccentric cane is for Europeans. But in fact, these styles exist on both continents in parallel. And a good bassoonist and reed maker will know that a parallel gouge alteration will change how the reed sounds and responds, and will apply this technique in order to help them in the performance context. Now let's go to the desk and look at some cane and go into a little bit more detail. So here we are at my desk and we're gonna look very briefly at four pieces of cane before I explain how, why eccentric versus concentric cane, why that matters in your reed design. So here's an example of one piece which is obviously, which is obviously eccentric. You can see it's quite extreme. Side edges are quite, and it isn't quite symmetrical either, but I didn't gouge it. Now we have another piece here which is of a smaller di diameter, but it is still eccentric. It's, it is a bit further down the spectrum towards concentric cane, but it is still, has, it, the side edges are still thinner than the center. Now we have two pieces which are concentric. They look a little different from each other. This one, as you can see, the side edges are the same thickness as the center. 
Looks a bit strange. You don't often see cane, which actually has flat sides, but that just has to do with the peculiarities of my gouger. And then we have another piece, similar idea, except it's gouged a bit thinner. And the diameter is a little bit wider. I've measured these all already, so you can trust that what you saw is correct. All profilers are, you know, they had, they look a little bit different, but the, the engineering behind them is the same. The theoretical underpinnings are, is the same from one profiler to the next. Where they all operate under the same principle, which is that the cane is stabilized on the bed of a, of a profiler barrel. And then any cutting that happens take places from the, the, this top end down and not from the bottom of the cane up towards the, the top uh, layer here, the epidermis. So it is important that we imagine that the profiler itself, once you set it up to do something, it is always making the same cut uh, in terms of its, the blade's position relative to the barrel. No matter what kind of cane you've got on the barrel, the blade is always going to make the same distance between the barrel and the blade, I guess you could say. There's always that same air gap as it travels, no matter what. And what gouging allows us to do is it allows us to change the particular fibers which appear at the top end of the profile. So if we have, for example, here, I've got, uh, as you can see, a sort of cross section of the barrel. So we're looking down the barrel as if we're, we're looking this way, uh, straight down the barrel when we're looking here on this piece of paper. And what I've got here, uh, sort of up here with, which has been, uh, I guess, I don't know how to say that. I'm texturing it. <laughs> And that is, let's say, a theoretical uh, profile cross-section of, of the tip or of the fold of a profiled uh, piece of cane. And so that's, let's say, it's, it's every time we profile a piece of cane, that's the design. And I'm not talking about thicknesses here, but let's say uh, it's uh, 0.6 there and 0.6 three there. I mean, that's, that's pretty extreme, but you're just getting the idea that I'm, I'm trying to explain here. You get the general idea here. Now, if we go and look at the position of putting, so we put concentric cane onto the barrel of the profile and we fix it down with the, with clamps. So the cane is supposed to be flush. The bottom, the, the bottom layer of the cane is supposed to be flush with the barrel. And what you'll see, and I've, I've just done this as a sort of, as a bit of a graph here, um, but of course there are multiple layers. It's not like there's only two layers of cane uh, that we're talking about. Um, but just to give you an idea to simplify the whole concept, I've put a lower layer of cane in orange with the orange highlighter and the top layer of cane in blue. And so that's what a concentric piece would look like. And this is what an eccentric piece would look like because as we make the cane thinner when we're gouging it, we're actually bringing the side edges of the cane, we're taking those soft orange layers away entirely. And so if we flip this over, as you can see, this is eccentric and concentric. So if we flip this around, you can see that when you have the concentric profile cross-section, that of course, what because the cane is uh, the the profile is always profiling the same thickness. Then what is left on the side edges of the cane, of the thinnest area, is the cane which is orange, because at the thinnest point in the concentric part, all that would be left is orange, and then conversely with the eccentric profile cross section. Because there is very there is none on the so very side edges, there is no 
orange layer left in the gouge at all, then the cane that is left in the profiled piece of cane on the side edges is from a higher level, from the blue level. To give you an idea here, you can see that on the side edges, this is my example, um, the blue is all that's left, and so therefore, because the blade is always keeping the same distance away from the barrel, then this is naturally what is going to be left at the end when you've profiled your piece of cane. And so finally, just another way of looking at this when we're looking down at the blade, to give you an example of the concentric versus the eccentric, theoretically, as you come down to the thinnest layers of the cane, you're going to find that the lowest layers, the thinnest areas, are going to come through and out to the top of the profile. So where the... And then the same thing with the eccentric, or the, the opposite of the eccentric, is that you generally keep higher levels, and therefore either more, you could say, more flexible or harder layers of cane on the, uh, t on the edges or the thinnest parts of the profile. So it's just another thing to think about if you find that you're working with cane, which is generally a bit soft, or when you finish making reeds, even though you may be working with cane that works really well, but you feel that the reed is maybe not bright enough, if the, or the reed is collapsing quite a bit at the tip, um, where you see that the two side edges, for example, um, when looking at the tip, are often like this. A way to maybe combat that is to give strength to those areas by working with eccentrically gouged cane and therefore creating some stronger layers of fiber here on the corners of the tip. So I hope that this video has been helpful to you. If you want to see more information on reed making from me, you can visit the bassoons.ch Facebook page linked below, where you can watch over 30 live streams on reed making topics. And don't forget, please consider supporting my online work by becoming a patron via Patreon or by making an order at bassoons.ch. Thanks very much for watching. Take it easy. Bye-bye.